again and welcome to next gen retro men podcast this week is completely different than last week because we were all together last week this week we are all separate for the very first time adrian and i are practicing social distancing which you should be doing too if you're listening doing it before to this y'all were so you know what you Drove all the way to San Antonio. <laughs> Just to sneeze on us. Anyways, I'm Ryan, uh, not joined in the studio with... Um, Adrian, in my own little bunker here. And I'm Jason, in a room. Bedroom. Alright. So, uh, we got a, a new kind of segment planned for this week. We'll let Adrian explain that here in a little bit. But in the meantime, before... We get to uh, the news and that. Adrian, what you been up to? Uh, not too much this past weekend. Uh, everything's kind of on pause or halted. Uh, so I've been spending a lot of time with family, uh, sheltering in place. Make uh, it sound like a tornado's coming. <laughs> Something's coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Carrie's actually been sick. So, Great, glad I was around her. Yeah, yeah. She went to the doc- doctor on Monday. Uh, there was no fever, so you know, no corona, but she's got the bronchitis, and uh, you know, it's it's still a pain in the ass. It's not corona, but like it's still, you know, it it still puts extra stress on everything. You know, is it a pain in the ass or is she <clears throat> a pain in the ass? You don't have um, to answer that because she <laughs> listens. She doesn't listen. No, both. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, both. All right. One oh, no. one, amp- one amplifies the. My other. wife, my wife will tell him because she listens, but you know, whatever. And um, <clears throat> just um, kind of hooked on the news, not like a, oh my god, the world is any kind of way. I'm just kind of like this is all, it's 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 different. It's it's kind of in a weird way, kind of fascinating. Um, it definitely be not, in the like textbooks in the future. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just, it's just weird to see all the stuff that's been going on with that said a little hoarding not like not not a lot but you know a little bit you just never know and uh just mainly trying to keep uh charlotte occupied uh, her daycare is canceled um this past week or this week right now and they're thinking of maybe reopening next week but that's probably gonna not happen if things keep going as the way they are yeah. So we're just trying to, you know, one day at a time. You, you know, it's a good way to uh, to occupy her. Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> yeah. See, I haven't. I'm still going to work every day. So, like, I'm waiting for that. Like, you know, everybody shelter in place. Like, I'm. I'm <laughs> you've I'm <still> been <laughs> you've been furloughed. Yeah. I'm, no, God. I'm real close to that. So mm. yeah, I work for family. So hopefully that's. Gives me some kind of security. Yeah. Well, I mean, for like, so furlough is basically like you stop coming to work, you're still employed. They're just not paying you. So hmm. that's half my staff right now. Yep. Yeah, the that's entire of... service industry is kind of screwed right now, aren't they? You yep. can't eat inside, but we'll let you go for, to go. Yeah. All right. And uh, what Jason, about you, you there? Yeah, Jason. What about you? Uh, been on vacation still. Tomorrow I officially go back to work. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's going to be... It's been kind of hard because we've been doing the social distancing. We're trying to do really well on bunkering down as well and just kind of going out as needed because there are kind of a few more cases popping up here and there. Luckily, they're all kind of linked to the people like this one household. But still, like, don't want to take any chances. Uh, only times we really go out is because uh, we have an 11th month old. You can't really put on Super Mario, Mario Odyssey for him. So it's more about uh, him wanting to hold your hand and walk around the house over and over and over and over again. That that just sounds like you haven't even tried to make him play Mario <laughs> Odyssey. I don't have Mario Odyssey. That's okay. a failure on your part. I, I tried I tried Call of Duty Warzone, and he wasn't interested. Yeah, good call on his part. <laughs> no, nah, that's really good. But anyways, yeah, I've been playing that, too. 
uh, got hooked on it real hard last night. Next thing I knew, it was like 3 a.m. And I'm like, oh, no, God, I've been playing Call of Duty all night. How, what am I, 15? Yeah, it's, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I drank Monster some, Energy drink? Nah, some uh, Red Bull. Anyways, it's it's fun. People, if you are kind of skeptical about Battle Royale, it's not going to change your mind. But it's a good, it's got good fundamentals. It's still a AAA game. I would just play Titanfall 2. Yeah, it's, uh, but it's not free. It's like you own bucks, it. but yeah, you but, own it, so it is free. Yeah, but it's, look, okay, I'm still enjoying <laughs> it. It's fun. Uh, I did some yard work since I was off, and that was kind of fun. I like doing yard work. I want to start a garden here soon, so you should have mowed my yard before you left. No, <laughs> I didn't have time. Oh, I yeah, I, I miss living in a house. We, since we you, lived in an apartment, you're like, welcome. Yard work. You're both welcome to come cut my grass anytime. And other than that, just uh, been building and painting my Warhammer, guys. Pretty much done with my 1,000-point army. Sweet. What about you, Ryan? What you been up to? I've been building my Warhammer army. Uh, my Crisis suits, I've been working on those. I posted some pictures of uh, my first Crisis suit that I had built. It wasn't fully completed, but I had magnetized it and was real happy with it turns out i <laughs> messed up and put part of it on backwards so i had to like tear it apart and i used plastic glue so it didn't like snap apart like it would with super glue but um i used some like little hobby saw blades and was really able to like take it apart and reassemble it without it really messing up and i used some like green so i was like really proud of myself like i i messed up putting well one of the magnets in one of the guns the magnet like flipped before I put it in there and then it stuck in with like the glue and the green stuff. Yeah. So I like got a little hobby saw and like sawed it out and like took it out and flipped it and then used green stuff to like fill in the, the hole like that I saw or the, the like line that I had to saw into it. And I think it looks decent. Like when I paint it, like, you might be able to notice a little bit of it, but it's not going to stand out. And I was like, really like proud of that. Like the first like one I'm, always comes out a little wonky, but you're extra proud of that first one. Well, I, I'm just like that. I'm, I messed up like, and I was able to like correct it instead of like getting like frustrated and, and kind of disheartened. And, you know, I was a little frustrated at first, but like, I just kind of stuck with it and, you know, it was, it was kind of like a good moment for me. Like it, it felt like a, another Learning step or evolution. Experience. Yeah. In, in the hobby, right, right. like it felt good, but yeah, just magnetizing weapons and crisis suits and getting the I most don't... out of your money. Yeah. That and, and just, that way you don't have to buy another like $60 crisis suit. Yep. I, I mean like I'm, I'm having a good time doing it and it's, it's real, like time consuming and stuff. So it's good for, you know, <laughs> what's going on right now. Kind of want to get doom, but like, I don't have enough money for it. And the work situation is kind of weird. So I would have to like trade some stuff in and like go out in public. And I don't want to do that. So I may not be getting doom right away. I, I don't know. We'll, just, we'll see. Just wait a bit. It'll be on sale soon too. Yeah, I know. And I have, I need to finish. Uh, <laughs> ooh, it's kind of bad to admit this, but I still need to finish Sekiro and oh, you never did finish it yeah i got stuck on that fucking boss yeah and so yeah there's stuff i want to play like i, I need i want to go back and replay dishonored 2 because i never beat that i got real close and I, something else came out or so i don't remember so there's i think it's a good t like chance for me to go and, and backlog some stuff and uh you know play some destiny 2 eh, not really I yeah just that. Other than that, I've just been hanging out with the family. We've been watching movies and documentaries and oh, just, so just kind of hanging out. Too. I only have only had to watch it once, but you know, I'm sure. What you pop think? Up. Did you like it? I didn't. I didn't watch a like oh. sit and watch the whole thing. Like I was working on some of my my crisis suits while while it was on, but it was it was cool. Like the music. You know, the music is. The there was a lot at the beginning, man. It it eventually kind of like balanced out, but there the was like the first one did the same thing. Like there's like four <laughs> songs back to back to back within like the first thirty minutes, and then yeah, it's, there's none. I guess. I guess I, I don't know. It, it was good. Like I'm not hating on it, but it's just like it's not something where I'm like, ooh, I want to watch that again. 
So I've watched it <laughs> three times. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got three old, so I've already seen it like four or five times. I'm a 12 year old girl at heart. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that's that's kind of all that's going on. Just kind of the same as as everyone else. Um, just trying to keep myself occupied and take care of my kids and family and make sure we can get out ahead of this and do my part to not spread it. So, yeah, if you had it, all that bat soup I've been eating. Anyways, we're going to confirmed. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it. Anyways. So we'll uh, spiral that straight into what's news and we'll touch on like game. So I, I kind of mentioned earlier, like going to GameStop and having to trade in a game and stuff to like get doom eternal and GameStop's like fucking up hardcore. I heard something like, what, what's the deal with that? They not, pretty much properly. Yeah. They're, they're not giving the stores like cleaning supplies while they're sending out emails and messages to customers saying like, Hey, we're doing everything to make sure you know, we're handling it and not closing stores like when one of the staff members is sick. And just if you go to like the GameStop, like r slash GameStop subreddit, they're in like full on revolt, man. It's it's crazy. There's like a consumer or a not consumer, a like workforce uh, a retail watchdog group like in there with them now. Like it's <laughs> they like if, depending on how bad this is, this GameStop. Uh, I mean, there's other stores and stuff, of course, but, like, GameStop's handling it really, really poorly. Saying that they're, like, there was a post where someone said on a conference call, they said they were going to try and take advantage of the situation with, like, tech trade-ins and stuff. And they're like, we shouldn't be taking advantage of this. Like, we should be, like, doing what we're, you know, what we should be doing. Uh, so, I, again, a lot of that's a hearsay and, and stuff here and there, but they seem to be handling this really poorly, and this might be one of the final nails in their coffin, like, because they've been struggling for a while with the Reggie joining on board, too. Like, it's not a good time. It's not, I wonder it's, if he joined on board and all this happened, and he's just like, oh, what have I done? Maybe. Like, who knows? But, yeah, it's it's not – they're they're not handling the situation well, so. Um, I haven't been to a GameStop in, like, a year and a half, so bye. Yeah, I, I go every once in a while. The one by my house, I knew people that worked there, so it was kind of like good. And one of the managers there was like, like we were we were good friends in, in the sense where you know we talked about stuff. And um, when I worked at GameStop, he you know worked at another one, and so we kind of knew each other. Um, he's a really cool guy, uh, still is a really cool guy, I guess. And I just haven't talked to him too much recently, uh, but he would help me out there, like as far as uh, with, you know, pre-order bonuses and, you know, just different things here and there. So it, uh, but yeah, the, the turnover there recently has been real bad and it just, it's turning into one of those game stops that uh, are annoying and it wasn't that for a long time. So speaking of other things, uh, related to, uh, COVID-19, uh, Black Widow was delayed. Yeah, that, that, that sucks. And fast yeah, I, mean, I, I totally understand and, and agree with it, but like that that's like the only movie I've been like really looking forward to. Yeah. There's been a lot of uh people saying to you know release it on Disney Plus or just release it on digital uh early. I've been saying this for years. I'm really surprised movie theaters are still kind of a thing. Like I, I understand that people want to go to them, but I could I would pay the same amount for a movie ticket for a one time rental for home. Oh, hold on. Like, I, I, would, I like, enjoy, like, you know, that experience, like, on the mm -hmm. big screen. Oh, yeah, that's why I think it should it's be, like, available, event. but I also don't have the ability to go to a movie theater anymore. With, like, yeah. Grayson being so young, I would like to be able to, like, just watch a movie that's in the theater from home. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, NBC... there was, was a good, like, two years where I didn't go to the theaters. No. When Charlie was born. NBC Universal is releasing, like, Trolls World Tour on, like, digitally it's like 19.99 for a 48 hour rental See, and that's a good doing, idea they're doing the same thing with uh the hunt or something i can't remember the actual name of that one and then uh the invisible man like yeah it's the hunt yeah, yeah. you'll be yeah, able to rent new you'll, releases mm -hmm, you'll, so they're they're already testing that 
movie theaters are closed. Like you couldn't go Thanks. even if you wanted to. So I think Harley Quinn's getting released early. Star Wars just uh, is available now to, to... Oh, God. but anyways, I'm just saying like their companies are releasing things early and differently because of the, the situation. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see where this is going to take entertainment. Like they're, it's kind of a test market a huge... to see if movie theaters mm-hmm. are even necessary. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Some, I think some huge shift is like going on. Yeah, it's it's this I it's also a good big shift for like working from home and other things like this this is going to be it seems to be a turning point for for certain things in in society and business and media and like all kinds of stuff. So we'll see what comes out of this, you know. All those yeah, like, meetings like after... could have just been emails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, like, speaking... like after like 9-11, it was kind of like the new America, the new normal. Like I think this is mm-hmm. like another one. This is the next chapter, like a new, it's going to be like yep. a post-coronavirus America. Yep. yep. We'll mm-hmm. see what happens. Yeah. Um, well, let's jump back to <laughs> some, some more kind of entertainment type things. In regards to coronavirus, uh, Minecraft is being used as like a, platform for social get-togethers like there was a, a thing in elementary school in japan or i'm not sure the the age of the kids or whatever but i think it was an elementary school had their graduation in minecraft that's cute it's awesome <laughs> it's fun like dude ben is hooked like, oh no I, I definitely want to play like i played minecraft for a good like awesome. year i got hooked on it hard i had like my house i had redstone mm-hmm. everything it's a it's yeah. a great game for creative people he's got the education edition which we can use for some of his homeschooling stuff but yeah he's building and and doing all this stuff in it and it's starting to become other things as well outside of just a, a video game and one of the things that i think is really cool for it there is a foundation called reporters without borders And they get journalists that are like banned in their countries and work with them and help, you know, get their stories out. And they teamed with a uh, organization called Blockworks that builds things in Minecraft. And they built this library of banned journalists where you can go in and get like illegal news stories and stuff that are banned in these countries. And you can visit it online to get this information so that's freaking awesome like that's really cool yeah yeah so just to jump back real quick to movies sonic the hedgehog has beaten detective pikachu at domestic box office for the number one gross of of a video game movie when you saw that trailer a year ago the first trailer yeah, and poured bleach into your eyes. <laughs> did you did, honestly? Did you think it even had a chance? The other thing that no. I really love about this story is like Sonic's like last couple of weeks have been really hard to get sales for the movie too. Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine the sales it would have like? It probably would have done this way earlier too if this whole virus wasn't going around. I wouldn't even. I, I expect it to be released digitally soon. Like honestly. Yeah. Like, There's still I, billboards like around town. Mm-hmm. With, like I, I've never seen any billboards of any movies. Well, at this the, point, they gotta go Sonic. fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see what you did there. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's it's just a crazy story. Like, good, good for them. It's another another thing that's cool about that is it shows, hey, maybe we should listen to the fans sometimes. Yeah. Like it. it yeah, that was a big thing. Like, people were. were it was like it was like fifty fifty. Like people were like, yeah, we should listen to the fans, but there's also like, you know, let Creative. the creatives, you know, do what they want. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, if you're, if you're was... adapting someone else's, like they're not they're they're not creating Sonic. Like if if they're adapting someone else's set artwork, it should reflect that. Especially if your goal is to make money. Let's yeah. just be honest. So that first blue creature was not Sonic. It was like the Chupacabra. Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah, a it's... baby with a hedgehog. With those sexy legs. And those Dude. nasty teeth. The baby oh, teeth. Oh, man. It's so <laughs> weird. And then one other thing real quick in movies. Oh, yeah. The Kevin Smith 
I don't know how true this is, but Kevin Smith claims that uh, Charlie Cox is in Spider-Man 3. Fuck yeah. Uh, that, I, I mean, uh, I could see that. I, I, like, after the way the second one ended, I could see him being his defense attorney. Yeah, and like, I, I don't even want to see like Daredevil. Like, I, I still want it. I still want it to be uh, Matt Murdock. But like, I I would be fine if it wasn't Daredevil. I mean, I I would be fine if he didn't portray himself as Daredevil. I, he was just I, char- he was just his lawyer the whole time. I read a lot of Spider-Man comics and Spider-Man and Daredevil and subsequently like Peter Parker, Matt Murdock are really close in the comics. Yeah. So a Spider-Man Daredevil team up would be super kick-ass. Like I'm down for that. Oh no, no, I'm totally for it. But like, I'm saying like, even if it wasn't that, like I would be totally psyched for just Matt Murdock. Yeah, if they're, oh, if for they're sure. going for like Craven the Hunter too, and Daredevil's just kind of there to help Spider-Man come back after whatever, we all know what happens with him with Craven. If you've read comic books and all that yeah. stuff, it's like, I'd be okay with that. Like, take a pretty dark path with his storyline. Yeah, and just, man, just the Billy Club flying from off screen and cracking a dude in the face while, like, he has Spider-Man, like, pinned down or something. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, and I would say, like, Daredevil Season 2, especially, like, the first half of Season 2 is some of the best, like, TV ever. Yeah. Made. Him and it was, that was the Punisher one, right? Yeah, it was the season like the half, the first half of season two where the Punisher was like yeah. the major arc. Yeah, it's before it's so what, what, good. What do you think of the first? I like the first season. The first season was really good too, but the, the like, first half of season two was better than the whole first season. Yeah, I like, I like yeah, all of it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I like all of it. That, that whole like, Although, um, hallway scene is like three? the best of like everything. I haven't seen season three. I don't know if I watch it because the Defenders was so not as great as I wanted it to be. Oh, the Defenders through, was not good. I got through half all right. of it had Weaver, Iron right? Fist. I got through half of Iron Fist and then just I didn't. That's where I stopped. <laughs> I got all the way through Iron Fist because I fucking love Iron Fist in the comics, and it was not very good. Season two was good. He was better in Defenders than he was in Iron Fist, and he I, was really good in Iron Fist season two. I didn't watch that. I didn't even know they made a season two. It's, after the Defenders, I kind of gave up because <clears> I just it was like I was not impressed by Defenders. But yeah. I still like those characters, and I hope that this is true, and they they bring the the Netflix characters back into the MCU. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So um, we'll jump to some video game stuff real quick as well. Uh, we'll start with Nintendo. Nintendo had a Indie World uh, presentation. I'm just gonna kind of go through these games, and if y'all want to talk about any of them a little bit more, let me know, and we'll we'll stop and chat about it. They started with Blue Fire, which is a third-person platformer action game. Looked pretty cool. Like, kind of neat, like Dark Souls-y, glowing eyes type, kind of ethereal traversal and stuff. It was pretty cool. Uh, Baldo, which was like straight-up anime, uh, like an action-adventure RPG. I Am Dead, uh, puzzle game. Looked pretty cool. Had kind of a, a neat concept of like manipulating objects and things and uh, you know it just kind of cartoonish and still kind of had like a realistic touch to it. it was pretty cool looking bark uh which like b period arc which like stands for bio interstellar arc it's a 2d co-op space shooter with like dogs and cats flying spaceships and shooting everything but it kind of made it seem like it was kind of family friendly or whatever so that was kind of cool freak apocalypse it's an adventure game from uh, Cyanide and Happiness, so yeah. probably probably pretty funny. Uh, Summer in Mara was like a farming, crafting, tropical adventure exploration type thing. Looked really, graphics looked cool. Quantum League, they only talked about it just a little bit. It's like a competitive shooter. It wasn't, they, I, I could be wrong. I remember them saying FPS, but the gameplay bit that they showed was third person. It has like time mechanics in it where it makes like a recording of you every round and it's one on one or two V two. So it makes a recording of everything that you do, you moving, shooting, jumping. And so the game seems to the gameplay kind of makes you want to like flank your enemies and draw them into traps that you set the previous turn. It's kind of 
kind of weird. Like that, that one game where like you play and you kind of rewind a kind of. Uh, kinda, but it's like yeah, each time you rewind is a new turn. It's 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 weird. It looked cool though. <clears throat> the Good Life is coming to Switch, which is a game from uh, Swery, guy who did um, one of, oh god, what's the name of that weird the premonition? Ex- yes, there you go. It's a debt repayment RPG where you would like transform into a dog or a cat. And, I don't know. It's weird. The Last Campfire is done by Hello Games, which uh, they did. No oh. Man's Sky. There you go. Keep forgetting. Yeah, so up. anytime you watch that trailer, just assume only 10% of that game will be in it. <laughs> hey uh, It's a third-person exploration puzzle game. Has huge journey vibes. Like, huge. They showed okay. Pixel Junk Eden 2. It was like a platforming puzzle sensory experience uh, from Q Games, who did like all the other Pixel Junk games. They're good. Uh, Feria is a strategy card game where you, like, build a deck as well as terrain to fight on, so that looked kind of cool. Uh, that's up my alley. Yeah, it looks really cool. You should just look up the, that F-A-E-R-I-A. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Looked really cool. Eldest Souls, which, well, that's just such an on-the-nose name. Uh, it's a boss rush isometric hack and slash. Looked really cool. Wasn't sure if it was a roguelike or not. It, they, they made it seem like it was, but it didn't say it was. I don't know. Looked cool. Uh, and then they did kind of a montage trailer and like tore through a bunch of games. Showed Blair Witch, Ghost of a Tale, Sky, which is from that game company, which I believe was an iOS exclusive. Yeah, that was uh, an iOS. Yeah, that game company did Journey and uh, Flower and Flow. So it, we're not yeah. just saying that game company. Yes, that's really the name of it. Uh, Sky Racket, uh, Super Liminal, Wingspan, Dicey Dungeons, Bouncy Battle. Moving out, moving out looked like overcooked, but like with like moving furniture. And I, I downloaded stuff. the demo for that for PS4. Uh, cool. And it's pretty pretty goofy. It's fun. It looks it looks like it. That's kind it's of exactly, exactly what you genre. said. Yeah. Uh, and then they shadow dropped or they they released uh, Exit the Gungeon. Um, so it's out already. <sighs> it's a 2D platformer, but not like a side scroller. Yeah, it's it's a 2D platformer, but it's, it's not. It's not a roguelike this time. It maybe like it looks like it is, but it's like a side scroller. Did but you ever it's play not Enter the Gungeon? Yeah, I have it on my PS4. Freaking love that game. It's awesome. But it's so freaking hard. <laughs> but this is like the same thing, but it's like on a 2D plane, and like you're on a lot of like elevators going up as you're trying to exit the dungeon, and just single screen fights and. It looks really weird and cool, uh, so it's out now, so go buy it, I guess. But that was everything that they, they showed at that. It was, it was cool stuff, nothing uh, mind-blowing uh, or anything, but it was just kind of neat. Like, Nintendo's just really doing a, a much better job uh, with the Switch and indie games than they have in the past. So, so they're going to hold on to the Switch a little longer, right? Yeah. Compared I think to so. the PlayStation 5 and Xbox? Yeah, I don't think they're going to try to make something. They, they, they're doing their own thing, you know, mm-hmm. with it. They may release, like, a pro version or something, but I, we're a ways away from that, I, I assume. Uh, if they do, I hope they do it with, like, Metroid Prime 4, and I would buy a new one for that and if they do, like, a special edition, like, pro version or whatever. But that's just me, like, talking out of my ass right now. So, yeah. And just real quick, uh, they revealed the Xbox Series X, and uh, they did that the other day. And then uh, as of this morning, they uh, showed the PS5 like specs. They did like a GDC talk, some weird like synthetic audience or whatever. It was weird. It, yeah, I mean, but it was it was a GDC talk. Like, I wish they had been a little bit more yeah. upfront with that. I knew that's what it was going to kind of be like just from the way they talked about it. But the messaging of it wasn't super clear, so someone could have went like, get think, excited. Like, yeah, like, it's hype time. Something exciting. And they, they just kind of were like, this is what the PS5 is, and this is the thought process we had with me. It was very interesting. It just, oh, like, 50% like, of that shit went over my head, so. PlayStation, let's just be honest. People are going to buy it regardless if you make yeah. it backwards compatible. Just have yeah. announced yeah. backwards compatible and What's just have sent an email to everybody. They didn't announce a release date. They just showed specs. That's I all think, they did. It was an hour of specs. I think they can't right now. Like, just they don't like know. China, dude. China's their main manufacturing hub, and that place is 
like just starting to recover. So yeah, you know, we'll see I, what happens. I, I think it'll be summer 2021. Uh, I don't. I I still think it'll be. It'll be within a month of Xbox. 2020. Yeah, it'll it'll they'll come out by the end of the year, but I think in much like limited numbers and you know we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing so, before Christmas. Yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about before we go into the the main segment? No, I'm good. <laughs> All right. We should, we should do our 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 best wolf wolf. Howl. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna sing the oh, song. Right. I'm gonna sing yeah. the song that Ben came up with for <laughs> Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop. He's a wolf, and he's a cop. There you go. That's the theme song for Wolf Cop from Ben. That was very close to Spider-Man. Yeah. I, I like it kind of summarizes heard. the whole movie. Ben's never heard that song um, <laughs> that I'm aware of. But yeah. So, Adrian, explain your, your thought process behind what we're <clears throat> about to do here. All right. What we are going to do, we picked some random stupid movie. Uh, this one was on Hulu. Uh, it's Wolf Cop, if you haven't caught on. Uh, it is about 75 minutes long. I watched the first 25 minutes. Ryan watched the second 25 minutes. And Jason watched the last 25 minutes. Plus credits. Plus the credits. <laughs> Just in case, because you, you never know if there's any credit scene. Um, so yeah, we just kind of took notes, and we're going to see if any of this makes sense. Do we want to rank our thirds before we talk about the summary? Like, if we thought it was good or not? Yeah. Like, I, just one I out enjoyed of ten. it. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's very for... mystery science theatery. Yeah, yeah, I will put it. it I knows... enjoy bad movies. Yes. So. It's a bad movie that knows it's bad, so it leans into it. Kind of that, like, Evil Dead style. Like, original Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2. Yeah. Like, we know this is dumb, so, like, why don't you it laugh at this with doing. us? Oh, for sure. And they made a sequel, so they know exactly what they're doing. It's like the like Sharknado kind of thing. It's better than Sharknado. Like, I've never seen Sharknado. But your third is better, you mean. Yeah, so I, I can't give it, like, a score. I'll give you a score after we do our thirds. <laughs> okay. But you know what? No. You know what? Eight. <laughs> you know what? No, it's the greatest movie I've ever seen in my Fuck life. Fuck that. Eight out of ten, man. I, my, I love that kind of shit. Solid eight as well. Uh, I don't know what I'm rating it up against. Just, Just rate it up against like if pure enjoyment like, out of one out of ten. Uh, you enjoy your third. Time. Like when I was watching, I was like, "This is, this is, this is fun for what it is." I guess for yeah. what it is, I'll exactly. give it an eight. Yeah. Wait, all right. So we're kind like, of like, in agreement. Eight. Sitting around with seven and a half, eight. Watching, you know. Oh hell yeah. On, on the no, mine's movie. like mine's like eight to eight and a half. If you think yeah. Mystery Science Theater, then yeah, this is this is awesome. This is like 15 years ago. I would have thought this was the best movie ever. Like I I like <laughs> like was this is when I was like super into Screw like you, horror movies. There's list or whatever else. <laughs> I, yeah, this was like like my kind of shit back then. Like real schlocky, violent, dumb, like horror comedy stuff. Like I used to love this kind of stuff. I still do. <laughs> still watch it as much. You know so. Maybe this is my gateway back into it. So, well, let's 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 jump into it. So, Adrian, you had the first Ooh. third of the movie. Uh, yes. Roll credits. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so it starts off like the the opening credits are going. It's like a kind of like a heavy metal playing. You see like people in in robes like walking through a field. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and it's like, they're like chasing, chasing something. You don't know what it is. And then like, it just does that through the opening credits. And then the, you see them like throwing chains. And like at the end, you know, there's someone in chains. And he, it looks like it's a wolf or a wolf man or something. Maybe it's a wolf cup. It's and a then, werewolf? And you mean a werewolf? <laughs> it's copywritten. It's like a wolf man. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's all the credits. And it says, and then, hold on. Okay, yeah. So then it goes to. Does it ever right. say Wolf Cop on the screen? Yes, but not not right there. That's okay. what kind of threw me off because like the credits, the end, the beginning credits stop, 
Then you get uh, what's this guy's name Lou Garou. He's uh, <laughs> Lou. Yeah. Lou. They just Lou. say Lou so much. Lou. 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 Yeah. Isn't that his last name is Garou? So like Lou Garou, he he wakes up from a dream or something. He's next to like a, uh, some naked lady. Does it show titties? It does show titties. Fuck yeah. Um, I thought this was gonna be like a titty heavy movie, but like it that was the only titties I saw. <laughs> Were the, the were the titty were the titties heavy or were you looking for a lot of titties? A lot of titties. Okay. <laughs> um so yeah, he wakes up, he looks at her, he gets up and like goes to the bathroom to like just kind of splash water on his face, and then that's when she shows Wolf Cop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then right there it just cuts to him in full He's a sheriff or a deputy or something. It, it cuts to him in uniform walking to his car. He's you know he's driving to work. You can hear like uh, the radio playing in the background, like it's like a shitty small town. Uh, like crime is going all over the place. He he's he's just driving past like a group of guys just like being the shit out of some other guy, and then they look at him, and then he looks at them, and then they just kind of like smile at each other, and he just drives off. And the guy's getting. <laughs> The guy that's getting the shit kicked out of him also kind of just looks at him, kind of like, get the fuck out of here. And then he drives off, and then he stops at the, the stoplight, and some guys, like an old man, walks up to him and just smiles at him and, and waves. And then when he drives off, the old man just grabs his crotch and like flips him off, like fuck you. So like this, it's like a small little town that like doesn't give a shit about crime Anything. or whatever. It's like, yeah, it's like a lawless town. Yeah, and like the radio's still going on in the background, like. Uh, we need to clean up this town, and there's like a an election going on. <clears throat> uh, the mayor is like some old lady, and like the the challenger is, is some young guy named Terry. <laughs> Fucking Terry. <laughs> they tried really hard with these names, by the way. <clears throat> so he gets to uh... all right. So he gets to work. He's got this five o'clock shadow that like just never goes away. Like all day, every scene, it's like a thick Homer Simpson beard. Uh, he's drunk off his ass the whole time. You see him like pouring liquor into his his coffee. He goes to the station. They they call him out. They uh, send him to the woods. Oh no no okay no never mind. He goes to <laughs> he goes to like a <laughs> he goes to like a, a pawn shop or something, and this guy named Willie. He's like the owner of this pawn shop or gun shop or something. He's like, oh, let me let me show you the, what I what I saw in the woods the other day. Cause, and so he, he puts on a little video camera. Uh, <laughs> it's like um, I don't know, like pentagrams, and he thinks like devil worshippers or something out are out on, on the woods. Fuck yeah. And, and the uh, Lou Guru, he's like, you know, whatever. He's like, you know what what they say, you know what they say about the boy who calls or who cried wolf. And oh he's like Lord. My this is my favorite line in the whole movie. Like Willie, <laughs> the guy's like, uh, nothing happened to him, but the, what was it? Uh, the, the 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 town's flocks, the town's flocks were fucked. The town's flocks were fucked. He just says that like over and over again. <laughs> like what the fuck is going on? Uh, <laughs> uh, so the guy, the sheriff Lou, goes to the bar. Uh, he's just sitting there drinking. Uh, some other guy comes in. I forgot his name. He's like a bully or a criminal or something. Uh, he hates the the Terry, the the mayor candidate, because the mayor the mayor candidate is there. Does the guy that walks in that's a bad guy? Does he have a face tattoo? Yeah, he's got like a teardrop or something. Okay, cool, cool. All right, sorry. Yeah, just... yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. He like the, the the candidate's talking about something. We need to clean up this town, and then he leaves. And the guy with the face tattoo, like he like stabs a, a campaign button with Terry on it. So like something's gonna happen there. Uh, later that night, the guy um, uh, Lou Guru goes out to the the woods. He wakes up at home the next morning after hearing. Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's out in the woods. He's hearing a bunch of screams. He, he's, it looks like he's captured by people, like, in robes. 
and like he's screaming and everything and then like he just wakes up the next morning like in his home it's like okay was it a dream i don't know he goes to the bathroom he starts shaving but like it instantly grows back it's like that five o'clock shower shadow it's is like the like, scene from uh santa claus <laughs> yeah but with booze and uh he lifts up his shirt and there's like a carved pentagram on his chest Fuck yeah he, <laughs> he, he doesn't like freak out or anything he's just like okay that's there <laughs> uh so like he goes to work it's typical saturday afternoon <laughs> yeah he goes to work he's getting in his car and some neighbor like some hillbilly hick is walking his dog and the dog's like barking at, at at lou and like the the neighbor he just like kicks the dog and then the the lou's like don't do that and the neighbor's like why shouldn't i and then they just like cuts cuts the scene it's like hold on what kind of dog was this it was like a a little little chihuahua kind of thing okay um <laughs> let's see what else i just like how we're trying to like piece callbacks <laughs> yeah. yes well i watched the last part of it so i'm sitting here like hold up it's all making sense <laughs> this is all makes sense now like imagine jumping in and you're just like god yeah i didn't well i did the same thing but i didn't get to figure out how fucking it did <laughs> 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 all right so he goes to work or no, he, he goes straight to the forest because all the cops are over there. His boss is like, would you forget to shave? You know, to call back for him. There's beard growing back. But like the whole time, he was never clean shaven. So like, I don't know where that came from. Uh, they find Terry like like with a syringe and like heroin shots or marks in his in his arm. So and, but also he's like ripped up on his on his on his neck. So like he was attacked by something and Everyone's like, oh, he just overdosed. He's like, no, there's like fucking throat is all ripped apart. Oh, so Terry died. Yeah, Terry's dead. So like everyone's oh, okay. like, oh, well, that's that's the mayoral candidate. Hmm. Uh, he goes back to the bar. He's there making notes of what's going on. Uh, he's drinking. The bartender starts giving him shots. Uh, she kicks everyone out. There's kind of like innuendo, like, oh, they're going to like get it on or something. He... She gives him, like, a ton of drinks so she can go close. And then when she's cl- done closing, she goes back to him. And he's, like, just super drunk already. Like, like um, she, he, like, throws up. He's like, oh, oh hold on. Let me, let me go to the bathroom real quick. So, like, he goes to the bathroom. <laughs> he starts peeing. And then, like, you kind of see, like, the stream. And then it turns red. <laughs> so <he> turns, <laughs> and then it turns, like, dark red. And there's, like, blood everywhere. And he, and, oh, this is, like this is the transformation scene. So like, if you, if you think that he's, it's going to start with a, a close up of a human dick turning into a wolf dick. Uh, you're right. That's exactly how this. <laughs> <is>. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, so, so wait, they actually show it. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting there like, this is not right. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a big human dick turning into a, <laughs> Wolf dick pissing blood at you. He starts. <laughs> I'm he starts back. Like, I'm watching this whole so, fucking movie. <laughs> he starts like screaming, and there's blood everywhere, and he's got hair growing out. Um, oh, some guys go down into the bar or down into the bathroom. You don't really see anything, but like he like takes a swipe at him, and like just like that one swipe takes the guy's shirt off. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> um. Then he starts walking upstairs. She, the bartender, kind of like sees him coming. She turns the corner, and then it cuts to the next scene. Like that's it. Like he wakes up in Willie's bedroom, like tied to the bed, like the first pawn store owner. Yeah. Yeah, he's got him tied to the bed, and then that's 25 minutes. So he wakes up at Will's house or Willie or whatever. And they have, like, breakfast, and he, like, chugs a, like, little fifth of whiskey. And he, like, makes some eggs, and he puts, like, wolf's bane in it. And, like, he can't eat it. And, he like, they're just kind of making jokes. And you're, I'm, like, trying to figure out, are they, like, friends, or do they just meet, or, like, what the hell? So it's really confused at that point. And as you watch it, you kind of, you know, I, I figured out, hey, you know, they're friends. So... They get called to, like, a crime scene at the bar, and 
they don't like really show anything and it's like him and like a female cop partner i guess this is partner like talking and the girl that works at the bar like he kind of talks to her too but then he goes to the bathroom like crime scene and there's just like blood everywhere and i think his like superior officer gives him some shit too there i guess and they find like this like human face like there and then they the female cop like makes a joke hey it kind of looks like you and then like puts it over her face it's just kind of like <laughs> we like she like wiggles it and it's like or something and then the coroner's like looking and like going through stuff and he starts eating a sandwich while he's like standing over all this like blood and gore they never really it made it seem like he murdered two dudes and like there but you kind of were saying that they got away it didn't show anything it just showed him swiping at someone and then his shirt was just magically gone okay because then like the female bartender said something about him saving her or something so i don't i I don't know it was weird but she kind of also made it seem like she knew that the wolf was i i don't know it was again it was kind of confusing at this point so yeah what like then it cuts back to like the bad guy with a f- the teardrop face set too, which is why I asked that like talking to someone and saying like, I asked you to get the cop or, or something basically making it seem like he was trying to get like Lou captured or killed. I don't know. And the guy's like, I, you know, I've seen him. He looked like a, a wolf or, you know, something. And then he's like, basically makes some like joke or comment about like his eye and like seeing it. And then he takes like a switchblade and like stabs it in the dude's eye and like pulls it out. And the guy's eye comes off with it. And then he throws it at the wall and like sticks in the wall, like with the guy's eye on it. And that's when I was like, fuck yeah. Like (laughs) this is so dumb and gory. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what I'm, I'm in for now. So then it like cuts to Lou at the library, like doing more research. And I guess his dad was a cop. Because the his superior cop, like superior dickhead, like cop or whatever that, like goes by the book and gives him shit all the time, kind of makes a. He also like at the bar, I guess, made a statement about like if he's not like that, his dad would be like disappointed in him or something. So his dad was like this awesome cop, I guess. And then he kind of looks at research about like his dad and like a missing persons case and all this stuff. I don't know. And then um, he starts, like, kind of piecing this stuff together. And then he just stands up in the library and then yells, like, hey, you got any books on devil worship? And there's, like, a little girl standing there with, like, her mom and the librarian just are, like, looking at him. And so then it cuts to, like, him and Willie um, at the police station going through this, like, book about, like, devil worship and occult rituals. And he starts talking about, like, uh, werewolves, and they can't pronounce, like, lycanthrope or whatever. And so they try to pronounce it. It's like, lycanther, and it, yeah. Anyways, and they talk about, like, werewolves and, like, how they're made and this thing called the reckoning, where they, like, kill a werewolf when it's, like, weakened. And then, like, shapeshifters drain the werewolf's blood and uh use it to like sustain themselves and their power or something so kind of makes it seem like the bad guy is kind of like this weird shapeshifter thing or something but didn't show anything i don't know so and it was like hard to tell how much of the bad guy they had already shown so that's why kind of asked adrian like did he have a teardrop tattoo so they kind of show like i guess piecing it together like okay and then they kind of do some flashback stuff of like lou with like getting a pentagram carved in his chest and freaking out and everything so it looks like the bad guys created lou or turned lou into a werewolf so they can then sacrifice him and use his blood and uh the female cop it like so before the female cop shows back up willie uh, says like do you want a horse tranquilizer and has this like huge horse tranquilizer like suppository um and then the like superior cop shows up and he like has to hide it and they you know so then they cut to like Lou's locked in like the jail cell at the like sheriff's office like in his underwear and i can't remember the word i wish i'd written it down they keep making a joke about like willie keeps telling him to take off like take off his uh i can't remember his underwear like and they keep making a joke about it um and he's like gonna film him like transforming into a werewolf 
like in the jail cell so like he they can see it and then but he's still contained and like can't hurt anyone i guess and then he turns into the werewolf and it was a pretty fucking cool transformation scene like he doesn't he like start grow- with his dick no <laughs> um <laughs> i guess that like I don't know, they were lucky you that was so, a one and out <laughs> I kind of, like for me werewolf transformation scene like I'm thinking of American Werewolf in London or American Werewolf in Paris you know like where yeah. like they're yeah like his nails grow out and like no yeah. like this like he come the werewolf comes from like within his skin so his skin starts like ripping and he like comes out of like his flesh and like the werewolf like is inside him so yeah. it, like comes out it's like all like moist and, and like yeah yeah bloody and moist and like See, i didn't, I didn't get like and... that but like i saw like a ton of like hair and like blood like a, yeah like, on the first one so like he rips his own skin off and i guess that was his face earlier before in the the bar bathroom so then so he like transforms and like they kind of like him and willie like talk he's he's like give me a drink and he drinks like a whole fucking bottle of like whiskey like just pounds it back and like asks for another one or whatever and then the phone rings at the police station and he just like takes the bars of the jail cell and like pushes them open and like answers the phone. And they said there's like a robbery at like liquor donuts or whatever, which is like a liquor store and a donut store, I guess. I don't know. You put two together. Yeah. And so basically he's like, um, he like Willie says like, what the fuck are you doing, man? You're a wolf. And he goes, cop and he like picks up his uniform and then yeah and, and it's then, a wolf cop on the screen no I, oh i wish and then oh no you're it's about to get really like this is when the movie really seems like to just start going off the rails like even more than before so they go to the liquor store to like stop the robbery and he goes in there like just werewolf and like fucks one dude up up in the parking lot or whatever and then goes inside and the like robbers have like pig masks on or something, I guess. And um, <laughs> so well, like the seat's yeah. ridiculous. Do what? Oh, I, I forgot to mention like at the beginning at the, when he goes to the, the uh, police station the first time, there's like surveillance video, and then the, his female cop said she's like, oh, um, they struck again. He's like, who? And then she plays the video. It's like it's the piggies. Okay. So yeah, they may they make a mention of the piggies at some point later on, I guess. I can't remember exactly what. So anyways, in this scene, like they're like shooting at him or whatever, and then he sees like he's a werewolf or whatever, <laughs> and the guy's like, What the fuck are you? And he goes, The fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what that's what I was like, eight out of ten. So he kills both the robbers. Like the he sneak or he comes around on the other one and the guy just like faints, but I guess he kills him, I guess. I don't know. And so then he goes like back out to his like cop car and like rips and Willie's in the car like waiting for him. He like rips the door off the cop car and he's like, Oh man, that's another thing we gotta explain. And then there's like an auto body shop like next to him and then they pull the like he's like, oh, I got an idea and then Willie says like whatever you're thinking man I approve. And then they go into the auto body shop and then there's a car like soup up modification montage with like music, like metal music and stuff. <laughs> and he like turns his car into like the wolf cop cruiser, like turns the, like the lights on the top, like vertical, like a Mohawk looking thing. And like cuts like a W into the roof of the car and like <laughs> does all this, like puts like fins on the back of it and stuff and like turns it into like the wolf cop mobile or whatever uh for no reason i don't know <laughs> and then uh so they start like driving around or whatever and then there's like some kids doing like graffiti and then he starts pissing on him he's like hey kids my turn and then he starts pissing on him does it show his dick no and then oh, willie the says they got dick yeah <laughs> and then willie says something about like him eating too much asparagus or something <laughs> and then they're just driving around in the car like <laughs> joyriding in it and then they like he sticks his head out the like the door's still missing so he sticks his head out like a dog and like starts smelling something and they drive off into the woods and then it kind of shows like the bad guys having a party you can like honestly like obviously tell these like these are the bad guys and they're having a bad guy party <laughs> and um the main bad guy like with the teardrop tattoos like snorting like red like cocaine looking stuff like werewolf blood or whatever i'm not sure and then 
Wolf Cop crashes into the party barn, and then all the bad guys like freak out and start shooting him. And twenty, my twenty five minutes are up. Ah, uh, yeah. So you see where I started. <laughs> so just wolf I, cop being shot i start kind of where like he pulls i started with like slightly before he pulled into the barn and he gets out of the car and all oh, he's getting shot up by just everybody and everything and i'm sitting here like well obviously they're not silver bullets so they're not gonna hurt wolf cop so he walks over to a dude grabs his head face and just rips his face off of his skull and throws it onto the hood of the car and i guess his friend who i never even got to know the name of started trying to (laughs) started using the window wipers to try to get the face off and so it's just smearing blood all over the front of the freaking car and then he walks up to another guy and like jabs his fist into his gut he kills another guy by like putting his hand into his chest ripping straight up and like his head goes flying I mean, it's just bloodbath in this place that they're making like red heroin. This is uh, like where this is where you started. This is how I started this movie. And I'm sitting here like, what have they done? And I mean, he's just tearing through people, tearing through people, and eventually, like a fire breaks out, and his friend is like, "Hey, we got to get out of here!" And so he gets back into the car after like murdering like a good 12 or half a dozen people or something like that. And they drive off and it's a barnyard miniature that gets blown up. If you can guess what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, it's, it's, like, like, it's like, obviously like a <laughs> yeah, small Godzilla little, movie. It's like a small toy farm. Dude, I fucking love this movie. <laughs> they <laughs> zoom out on and it blows up a little bit of it at a time and they drive off and they end up at this like, I guess it's like the police office or something like that. I have no idea what's going on anymore. I'm just sitting here like, and they killed all those dudes. And no, it gets better. And there's this like brunette chick who's like, oh man, you're back. And something like that. And like, she knows that he's a werewolf. Is it the female cop? the bartender. Or is I, it no, the bartender? it's not a female cop. It's, it's I guess the bartender. It's just like a brunette lady. Yeah. Kind yeah. of reddish hair, like Auburn. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. That's the bartender uh, lady. Okay, so the bartender and him get it on while he's in wolf form. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen the first least, time. Yes, and it's at least 10 minutes long. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so did they, like, did they I show thought, wolf dick? No, they didn't, but okay. it was implied. How, so how did... How did how did I I'm not going to go into Wolf details Dick. because we're kind of running out of time. I'll just let y'all's imagination go No, dude. We can, no, we can I'm not. No, no it's okay. Pictures. I'll send you. I'll just go and watch <laughs> I'm gonna it. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch it. I was crying. I was laughing so hard. And uh, he the, like the, it basically ends and he wakes up and he's smoking a cigarette. And she's smoking a cigarette next to him. And she pours some liquid into his liquor drink. And he drinks it and gets knocked out, falls asleep. Turns out she was a shapeshifter, and his oh, friend shit. was a shapeshifter. Willie? Willie? Yeah, Willie's a shapeshifter. What? And the betrayal is real. <laughs> and he's talking to her like, oh, man, he's the most powerful werewolf we've ever dealt with. He's different than all the other ones. And Does it they show them him- in their shapeshifted form or unshapeshifted form? I'll get to it, Ryan. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I'm watching this movie. <laughs> and uh, uh, turns out, like, she... I can't remember exactly when it happened. But she unshifted out of that form, and she was actually the old lady mayor the whole time. Oh, I was going to ask. Like, what about this whole mayor candidate thing? Yeah, she, she didn't she even would talk about mayor. that in, in yeah. like, the half hour. So the bartender, the bartender... The bartender was, was the lady mayor. The lady mayor? And Willie, his friend, was a shapeshifter who betrayed him. And they bring him out to the woods, and they captured him and had him tied up. Well, the female cop noticed that he'd been missing this whole time, so she went to go figure out what was going on. And they had destroyed the tape of him transforming from before. Yeah. But the female cop found the surveillance camera tape. Word. And so she went out to go find him and uh, turn like... Turns out they were about to perform the ritual on him, and he gets loose, and the female cop shows up, and they just start murdering all these people. 
and whenever one of them dies, they turn into lizard people. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm so dude, I want to so, watch what, this movie what so it, much more now. And what it's did like, Willie turn into? He's, they're all lizard people. Oh, dude, like, I gets, love reptilians, man. Into, he turns into a lizard person, and there's like, all these cultists out there, and they're turning into lizard people as they're getting killed. But the werewolves really hurt. The, any wo- any one liners? Oh, God, not really. Okay, all right, fine, fine. Okay. Yeah. Is he with that guy with the tattoo, the little tear dot? Oh, he di- he died in the raid on the barnyard, but I didn't. Uh, he, he, he was a explore. major character, oh, so I figure he was just nothing. <laughs> yeah, I guess he was nothing in my third. And so all of this is going on, and the uh, police chief shows up, like the real dickhead. Yeah, yeah. he's the head of the shapeshifters. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and he has this sword that he's going to use to drain the wolf blood, and he's fighting the lady cop, and he stabs himself, like, and her at the same time. It's stupid. And the wolf cop shows up and sees all this happening, and then wolf cop pulls, like, starts fighting him and he's beating up the wolf cop and <laughs> is he a lizard person while he's doing this no oh, wow. he's, okay. he's like dickhead cop and he basically like i forget exactly what happened but the wolf cop drinks some drink at some point he drinks a lot of drinks him. at all points and he pulls out a gun and just shoots the guy in the head and that's pretty much the end of the movie all right so Bullet but, hole or head explosion? Bullet hole. Okay. But let me finish. What color blood? Credits go through. Keep. Oh, and it end ends credits. with an end credit scene. Fuck yeah. Of Wolf Cop showing up at that guy who, I guess, abused his dog. Oh, yeah. And howls at him. And then it ends. Oh, uh, you didn't, like, kill him or? No. Sweet. Dude, that movie is swinging to get him. You know what? After hearing all of this, nine. <laughs> Nine. I still Nine. give it like I, my, my. I think I got the best third. Oh yeah, you got like all the crazy shit. Like uh, I, it, yeah, it I just had no plot whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just got like a weird fucking roller coaster ride. <laughs> I was, like, what I I was like, I was piecing things together like, and then it literally right as it was getting just fucking awesome, it like, had to stop. And Adrian just got to look at a wolf dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm surprised yeah. that didn't make a a comeback like at the end or something. No, no. I think they got like they can only no, that, show a dick one time. I got I got a really awkward scene. <laughs> I'm to, I, I'm seriously going back and, and watching this. Like yeah, I, do it tonight. I, I'm not doing. I can't. I'm going to bed. Like I'm tired. Because I'm old, but I'm totally oh, okay. watching this. <laughs> uh, fuck yeah, this is it's a great movie. Nine out of Adrian, ten. Final score. What's that? No, what was your final score, Adrian? Oh, mine. Uh, uh, eight point five. But then I'll I think I'll watch it and bump it up. I think it's nine wolf dicks out of ten wolf dicks. Uh, I, I'll. It's uh, I'll definitely give it one wolf dick. Nine. <laughs> Nine reptilian werewolf fuck scenes <laughs> out of ten. Yeah, it's it's weird. So yeah, I totally want to like watch the sequel, and we need to find another movie to do this with again because it was pretty sequel? fun. No, I, I, uh, I we'll I, come back to the sequel, but yeah, I mean maybe I, I could spread uh, it. We'll see. Hey, spread it. Yeah, so that's Wolf Cop on Hulu. <laughs> Give it a watch. In thirds. No, mm-hmm. just. Don't do what we did. <laughs> Just enjoy <laughs> the. So you don't have to enjoy the wolf dick. So you can find us. <laughs> Just straight from that to uh, you can find us on Podbean, iTunes, and Spotify. Email, Email us. us at... oh, damn it. <laughs> you go. No, you go. Email us at nextgenretroman at gmail dot com. Instagram. Insta- <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you go. In- Instagram at Next Gen Retro Man. Twitter at Next Gen Retro Man. Facebook.com backslash Next Gen Retro Man. And that's it for right now. There'll be more Thank later. you. Yeah. Wash your hands. 20 seconds. Yes, yeah. wash your hands. And, wash your uh, hands. Hot water. Don't people. 
stay home if you can, if you like, you should, you know, don't hoard, don't hoard things. People need supplies, you know, too. So yeah. Anyways, be safe. Don't spread germs around and, you know, yeah. watch out Momo wolf cops coming for you. Oh Lord. Wolf cop. Wolf cop. Wolf cop. He's a wolf. Hey, he's a cop.